Weird. Uh, who is this weird John guy? Uh, oh, he, he got a fucking Jimmy Winslow over there. Uh, uh, Jimmy Winslow painted some fucking. Yeah. He painted like a uh, Seattle you're space needle. He painted uh, uh, San Francisco. And it looks just like it. And then you got some fucking weird shit going on now. Have oh, you? Turned out pretty bad. Yeah, you, you ever go to San Francisco? What is the aircraft? Oh, you. Oh, yeah, I've been down there many times. Have you ever brought anything through San Francisco? Yeah. Really, like, like souvenirs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> three three yeah. gay guys and a white chick. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, That's where I went down and got Melissa. And she said, you got anything? I said, yeah. I had all that shit and I went in there. Because uh -huh. they're all ripping cars apart down in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Where in the Bay Area? Daily City. Yeah, down in uh -huh. there. Uh-huh. Lombard. Yeah, the fucking gay parade going on. But yeah, I went in there and they're all like, and I pulled it out and they're like, damn, get him out of here. <laughs> so when you would run down to Mexico and those legendary runs and shit, did you go to sit through Sacramento coming back up or Frisco? Fuck, I'd go different routes every time. Depending on what route I ever wanted to go on. Man. Yeah. Hey, that's fucking weird, dude. I tried to stay on I 5 most time, but I went down 101 a few times. Yeah, that was kind of that. I don't like it. 101 is kind of shaky going, at least going down to California from here. I don't know. I've never taken it too far into California. I can take it all the way right down to Mexico. Mexico. It goes from yeah. it goes from Canada to Mexico. Yeah. It runs, yeah. It's. That's San Diego. I was trying to figure out how long that trip would take. It, 18 it, hours from here to San Diego or to Ensenada, anyway. Okay, so what about 19 in Mexico, would you say? No, oh, 18 was in Ensenada. Okay, so, okay, that's 18. Yeah, Tijuana, Rosarita, then Ensenada. Now, if we were to go north, say, and finish it off, we'd be at, we'd be at the Canadian border, so that would be in Seattle's what? How many miles around here? And that's another, it'd be another hour. Six, eight hours to Seattle. Okay, so then, and this goes about another maybe hour past hours. Seattle. So another hour twenty seven. So you're looking at what twenty seven hour drive probably. That's what time I. Time changes too, so you're safe. No, the West Coast is all in one zone. You have to go into Idaho or Nevada to get oh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh, it's all one time. Try to no, get that thing. You know, check it out. At Eleven yeah. o'clock. They won't let you come back through or go that way. No shit. You're Where are coming into you can California? Be a six mile hour or a six mile uh, line trying to get out of Mexico. Eleven o'clock. The fucking gates shut. Ding. Well, yeah, who would be want to be in there? Oh, yeah, of course, you had business there. Yes, yeah, so yes. You made sure you weren't getting up. And then at like 6 o'clock, it's like fucking, yeah, it's like dogs walking around your little fucking thing like two or three times and they're machine guns. I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah. You just sit in a sweat and you already smell like dope. And so. Oh, man, all right. So is that kind of trippy and hairy to get through? No. No? They don't really search. They didn't really ever. There's ways around it. No, uh, there was a lady that worked in San Diego, so she just uh, keys her, not keys her, shoved it up her twat. How much are we talking though at a time? How much? I mean, a ball, eight ball. Five <laughs> kilos. Double kilos. That's uh, five pounds. Uncut. Wow. And how often were you taking making these runs? You writing a book? I was yeah. scared. <laughs> I've already been sentenced. Right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I've been down there like twice a month. Yeah. What? What do you? What would? You, what do you think about here? And this is last question. Maybe you run? Run? No. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll that'll be next. Good. What do you? What do you think about? What do you think about the area? What do you think about the impact that methamphetamine has had on white suburban communities? What, what do I think of? Yeah, like, I mean, okay, here's a thought. Like, all these people, what if the meth didn't exist, do you think they'd be drinking? Do you think they'd be doing something else? Do you think Probably that it's... Something else, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's not just that it's a scourge. They'd be going around looking fucking frogs or something, you know? <laughs> Anything to get off. I know yeah. sniffing burlap. I know. Fuck it. Whatever gets you through the night, man. No judgment. If you caught with a fucking frog, you'd probably get, like, six months. But what do you think? Some of these people that get real down in the underbelly, though, less is with their minds and ways. It seems like if your consciousness isn't high, it can really tweak your brain into what? fucking Shit. tweaks, Bill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, man? You gotta eat and drink, I mean. Oh, I think so, too. It's a consciousness thing of it. 
is. I don't want to kill it and hurt it, but well, yeah. Huh. No, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, so it's like that. So if it were legal, it should be legal. It should be legal. It'd be about a dollar, two dollars for a quarter of it. They say if it were legal, to not taxed. If it were done like it should be, like a couple countries have done, and the crime is there and you see all the people like, I mean, they're focused. Straight fucking wow. Is that how they work hard all day? Oh, it's really like taking their mind it's over. Rock, 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 rock. Yeah, I wonder what the government role plays in on testing people with methamphetamine. We know about LSD tests they've ran, but it'd be interesting. It makes you see where shit like we were talking about you're talking about seeing shit alien and me too. It, the dimensions are changing, but I'm wondering, do you think the drugs fucking alter our perception into another I mean we know psychedelics do but do you think dope does? I think meth does for people that are conscious yeah it does but for people that aren't dude it turns them into these fucking zombies man but if you got some consciousness to you it can I know well he created LSD too what Hitler had LSD there too in 1938. Yeah, we didn't. We tried to claim inventing it here, but we didn't. And theirs was, I'm sure, a lot better. I could only imagine. Straight fucking ether, probably. Yeah. Back in those days, I mean. Yeah, but the consciousness given to him by evil extraterrestrials from all the barons. That's why he's, you know, and he, he hated, uh, what was it? He hated fucking women. Uh huh. Oh, Hitler did? Yeah. He, he oh, hated his mother, yeah. Oh. Probably like hey, I didn't know that. Yeah. And anything if he was Jew? Yeah. Fuck it. They're burn they're walking them in the infernal. <clears throat> Where do you go? Where well Hitler was surround shit? Hitler was surrounded by a lot of nuts though and yeah. a doctor and they kept him so high and jacked up, dude, and just as a figurehead there for a long time. But it's I read the autobiography on him too. Huh? He used to have a long mustache, you know, like Oh and, Hitler did? Yeah, and they told I, him he had to shave it. So like that, and that's where he become hit. I never knew that. Is that true? Really, yeah, true, no. true story. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay, that that's interesting. And, I uh, yeah, Jew. Anything Jew? Jew? Fuck. He, he's burning them, man. He don't know. Yeah, he. Uh, <coughs> that war was funded, also funded by a lot of big bankers above him. And did you ever watch that shit where he had the women, children, men all? Just, Walking straight into that fucking pit fire. Ah, uh, dude, yeah. When I was younger, a couple of times, it's really dis. It's really um not. I very. I mean, when I say a couple of times, I mean for a second. I can't. It was. It's very surreal and hard to um. Well, that's how and the corruption behind even Hitler behind it. I mean, it goes up to fucking Zionist bankers and the West and Europe and everybody. Somebody funding both sides of that war, like all wars. It's scary, man. He was and it, already, but that meth and shit just made it more fun. Oh, and it was, I can imagine. There the was no love with Hitler. You know, so. And, yeah, no shit. And the soldiers were on that LSD, too. And it was, and Hitler was probably on a lot of morphine. His doctor, and they found his doctor's was, journals. Up, the rush, you know, of uh, people fucking uh, bowing down to him, you know. It's like, yeah, well, you I know. I they're Jew, you know, fuck uh, well, I, right. I, a couple of his doctor's journals said that they were they were increasing his amphetamine dose like daily. It in. Read a little bit about Hitler. I yeah. Well, that's the only thing I didn't know about him was that handlebar. I I'm, I'm not yeah. no dummy on Hitler. Dude. Yes, I can. I can tell. I could sit here and tell you a whole bunch of shit on him too. So if you get the the but, you know, chemicals. You made his meth out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, dude. I'm sure those are under lock, stock, and barrel by the cartel for the reserved only for the Illuminati, man, and bigwigs. Yeah, no, fuck, man. Yeah, he, he was, uh, yeah, he. Well, the Germans were you know, smart, man. Their technology, I believe, you know, it was, was funneled to them by all the barons. We had a extraterrestrials better. helping them and then some helping us, too. The Foo Fighters. You ever read of the Foo Fighters? Who? The Foo Fighters. It was there was there was fights between the Germans and the U.S. in the air, and these things were out there. These interdimensional things were moving around, and the Germans thought it was some shit we might have. We thought it was some shit the Nazis might have. Nobody knew, and they were up there and just kind of ducking and dodging around. And yeah, yeah. And then you had the depression back then. And, you know, I had a lot going. I mean, war, war. 
put them just I think too these these extraterrestrials that they, they, they were evil. They tried to contact Tesla. He said, "Fuck you." So the, the Pleiadians contacted Tesla, but and that was good. But these evil ones started talking to Hitler and channeling in this technology, dude. This high tech technology that we had never seen. That Imagine we had to get our act together to start Imagine catching the, up. The, the dope they made up there, the aliens. I know. That's can how you come there so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, they know the chemicals and how to, I'm sure, all that shit, especially the, the psychedelics probably from good races, but the chemical drugs here, I'm sure, are known and sp they're, they're probably peddled by the fucking yeah, shadier, them, you know, shadier races. Showing them this, you know. Edgar Casey. Yeah, they didn't you know. they just invent that shit, you know. It's like, uh, the aliens, a big part of it. It, it is. Uh, one of the pyramids in different countries, uh, Continents. <laughs> the aliens should go into the fucking prison system and start beating down those fuckers for treating people like shit, man. Yeah, and not and pulling a tooth. No Novocaine. They're so far advanced. No Novocaine. Dark. Can you believe no Novocaine for a tooth being pulled? Fuck that. I mean, that's and that's a human rights issue. And then letting if they don't have any family, letting people die. But nobody see people don't do nothing about it because. Dude, prisons suck, and they're they're getting privatized too, and shit like that, to where the government's not involved in it, and it, it, there's no oversight. Dude, it's bullshit. I think that's where I started getting my first heart attacks because it was such a shock to my heart. That fucking two and a half hours taking on that motherfucker, back and forth, back and forth. Dude, forth. Uh, that is standing up on the chair. You know, he just he ain't even a dentist. He worked at the fucking second burgers. And he was trying to pull it, dude. Oh, he pulled it. Yeah, the next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't get that one tooth out down there. And they wouldn't give any Novocaine. I'm not even much less any painkillers, but no Novocaine. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did give you an 800 milligram ibuprofen. That was mighty. Four hours. That was. And then oh. I had that done on a Friday. Then my stitches blew out. Uh -huh. She was bloop. And I couldn't get help uh, until Monday. How long when you got in there Monday to take him to get it out? I was in there at uh, 7 o'clock Monday. About for how long? Oh, no, they had to stitch it back up and cut all the excess. Uh, uh, shit. It was fucked up, dude. No shit. No pain. I, I was no so painkillers, dude. I've heard and stories like this. Go, they still make you go to work. Yeah. And then out in the fields after you get up here, there's a work camp. There's like a fucking pound of work camp. Yeah. I've heard of stories like that. A dude fucked up his back. They gave him Tylenol. And this guy needed surgery, dude. He's fucked up. All they gave him was some Tylenol. Yeah. Nothing. Send him back. And they wouldn't even give you Novocaine. That's got to be a human I've rights seen, uh, issue. I've seen people fucking slice their shit. Jump onto the bunk and fucking, you know, uh, just yeah. one another. But they had a big old fucking cemetery up there. Yeah. They, you know, it's... There you go, a little <laughs> pot, or spot. Or a spot. What a demeaning like, system. Uh, huh? Where, where was this? Where is this place? What's it called? Sure. Sheridan in Oregon, Sheridan That's Federal right, Prison. Uh, in between Salem and Wonder if it's privatized or if it's probably Google ran by the government. Yeah. You, know, Google Earth? you yeah. know, we'll have to check that out when when Senator when San when Sanders and Clinton come to Oregon. I mean, I ought to ask their campaign and and not only that, this place needs to be called. I might do that acting like I'm part of, of the media. Of, uh, yeah, because dude, this is a fucking this is something politicians need to know. No Novocaine for that. Your story is an outrage, dude. I mean, I was then fucking crying like a little bitch, man. I mean, yeah, you had to have a tooth pulled. They were trying for two and a half hours. No, no, but the thing yeah, is, the rule, no, no, the cane. Tooth. Wisdom tooth. Not only can they not give you any pain pills, but no fucking wisdom teeth. Yeah. It's just crazy. Man, I sat there and lived with that fucking tooth for probably a good year before I even fucking went in there. I, they got big old jars. Throw your fucking tooth in the rest of them. That's all it is, bro. And they show the jar when you go in? Oh, they're sitting up there in the windows, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of, I guess, cool. And uh, inmates are the, the assistants. Uh -huh. uh, Dude, what a fucking sham. What a sick joke. And it's just terrible. It's just like with getting people, you know, they get people yeah. in the system the like they're doing. Fear, the worst fear is in there is if uh, you had a, like a tsunami mm -hmm. coming. They're not gonna let you out. No, they're not, and that's something that people no, don't think I about see. either. What we talk well, about, about that right? We talk about these humane issues like preparing communities for tsunami. What are they gonna do to 
evacuate and help, you know, for humane reasons, prisoners, no. most of them that shouldn't be locked up. No violent, non-violent yeah, crime. Shoot you on the spot. Exactly. Uh, they're gonna shoot you because they don't want you to stand suffer. That in and, and people, this really, this shit happens. Yeah, and that's that's one of my worst fears. Where you know, like when you're younger, it's easier. When you're going there and you're older, I've I've seen old old people come in there, and I I feel yeah. so fucking bad for them because they're, uh, they're all fucked yeah, up. You know, yeah, someone didn't even have legs and shit. I was in court. The and if they couldn't go out and work, they made them fucking units. Start fucking cleaning shit. They had a ninety-year-old lady. I was thinking, can you watch that game? Can you have a hand on her game of jump? Yeah. It's crazy. It's like with the, you know, it's just like with this opiate addiction, you know. And I got to say kudos to President Obama the other day for for being at the heroin um, addiction summit, I believe it was called. At least he's doing something about it. The media doesn't cover this stuff. All it does, per se, is talk about Cruz and Trump and all that bullshit I'm not going to get into on this show. But the opiate addiction, the problem with it is, is, and it's good that the consciousness is starting to finally raise and, okay, these people that are about 20 years behind the curve finally accepting the fact that, okay, it's, it's, um, it's an illness, it's a health condition, it's not a matter of being evil it's not a matter of somebody chose to be an addict and all that. We need to get out of that mindset. I mean, did somebody who has diabetes choose to get diabetes because they wouldn't stop fucking eating a ton of sugar or, or whatever or not eat, right? I mean, so, you know, you get my point. Um, the, the, the problem is, is there's medicines out there. There's medicines that, like Suboxone. Suboxone was brought up at this thing. One of the speakers, a young lady, mentioned that she had been clean um, for for a year or so because of Suboxone. So, you know, which I've spoke about myself before. I, um, I got off of opiates in 2008 with Suboxone back before hardly anybody knew about it, you know, and I had a really tolerable high tolerance. And I've went into before on other shows like my Starseed Addiction show. But the point being is that Suboxone, what it does on the brain, is it stuffs your opiate receptors and makes your body, um, because of that, your body feels good. It doesn't add opiate receptors to your brain like taking, um, well, even methadone, heroin, Oxycontin, Vicodin. Um, this drug has some kind of a chemical in it where, okay, not only does it reject other opiates from your body, but it also gives you that satisfied, full feeling without being out of your mind high. But you do feel good on it because you're in no pain and, you know, things of that nature. And your tolerance never goes up on these things. They, you know, they have a limit of really like four a day, three a day that you could ever take. Because it, it doesn't work that way on your brain anymore. It doesn't work. And then you start going down in tolerance on them. <clears throat> but, and I think initially that's what they thought methadone would do when it came out in the 70s for heroin addicts. But methadone just builds your tolerance too. Your brain keeps producing more of these opiate receptors and more and more and more and keeps sucking more of your, the dopamine from your brain and your natural endorphins. You know, so... And the thing is, is it's rumored that there are miracle drugs out there like that too for cocaine, methamphetamine, um, alcohol, okay, you know, to where you may take something and you may take something and it, uh, you know, say you had a double shot of whiskey. Uh, if you were the worst alcoholic ever, you had a double shot of whiskey. Um, just twice a day, right? You went down to that and that's all you needed, right? Your tolerance would never go up and that little bit would take care of, would satisfy you, that craving in your body, okay? They have, you know, drugs like this that the government keeps secret because what's going to happen is if everybody was cured of all these addictions or, or brought down to a level of very initial use and never any higher, I mean, there's no money in that for, for the cartels and all these, you know, the reason why we're in Afghanistan, death, it isn't clear to anybody by now. 
Um, you know, I'm really remiss for even saying it. It's so obvious. We're over in Afghanistan, you know, for well, anybody's there for the poppies, you know, to the opiate crops, you know, to keep the world addicted. You know, people start getting on painkillers. Their tolerance goes up. Their doctor doesn't understand, right? So they try to get their prescriptions early. They buy more on the streets. They try to get from get them from people they know, yada, yada. I think most people know the routine. You know somebody by now who's affected by it. but um, And then it gets to a point where these pills, of course, people that sell them are fucking t shysters big time now because they're not in demand. I mean, you're talking, to, there are a lot of money to buy in the streets, and your tolerance keeps going up and up and up and up, like not just up and up like it would with alcohol or any other drug, um, you know, or any other drug period, but with the opiates, it your brain turns around every 21 days, so to speak, and your tolerance increases a little bit, okay, and so then you need a little bit more. And then, you know, and so and so, if you're using the medication to get that rush or good feeling from it, now there are probably 20% of the people out there that can just take it, like long term, and never increase their dose. They can just take what they started with, and that's that, you know, because they just think psychologically it's getting rid of their pain, and not only that, it's not maybe their body doesn't feel that good feeling that it gives them or whatever so but you know and then people get into having to buy heroin that's why there's a lot of you know heroin had uh, heroin use had really died down in the 90s and into the 2000s it was more other drugs and you know the old tar heroin from the big cities had kind of faded but now it's just it's an epidemic of it now and it's not just in minority communities it's that fact more so in white suburban communities now um because of the you know pain, prescription painkiller addictions you know the the 45 year old construction worker family man that can't get out of bed anymore the lawyer that can't get out of bed anymore unless he's got his got his pills and it just goes it's a rabbit hole and a drug like suboxone is a miracle if anybody out there has a problem with opiates or painkillers, I'm telling you, people talk. People want to talk about miracles. Let me tell you something. In mirror, as far as medicine goes of any kind, stories I've ever heard in my life, whatever this that, it's, there's I've, there's only one miracle, and it's a drug called Suboxone. So you know, I would encourage everybody to check that out and you know um yeah that was my best option quitting cold turkey is really nonsense for somebody to believe somebody can do and or expect them to do some people can but expect them to do bullshit and you know it's inhumane and really suboxone i'm telling you if you have a family member affected by it, if you can get a doctor to prescribe you Suboxone, you know, usually only cities have a few that do because you got to take a certain class to prescribe it for some reason, even though it's only a class two narcotic. Um, but yeah, and it's amazing. It's amazing. It, it's just amazing what it does. So anyway, you know, I just want to talk about that and earlier on, um, that earlier in the program there, I think I got cut off my introduction. Um, that was, uh, I, he'll, he'll remain anonymous, but that was a friend of mine that I've known for a lot of my life. And he was talking about a little bit about his life and, you know, we were touching on the prison system a little bit, but he had to go. So we didn't really get to get into it much more, but this is kind of an impromptu taping. I don't know if I'll even release it, but Hopefully, maybe if I do, people get some good information out of it. Again, it's Rock and Larry Lockin with Pleiadian Express Productions. Pleiadian Light Grid Project. Of course, you can catch us on Facebook by the same pages. We have a website, Pleiadian Express Productions. It's part of it's cut off. If you go to if you go to my Facebook page, Pleiadian Express Productions, you can find it there. Or you can find it on either one of our YouTube channels, which is Pleiadian Light Grid Project, which also has a page on Facebook. 
and um, Pleiadian uh, Express Productions, or I mean Pleiadian Express Productions, yeah, YouTube channel. All right, but everybody, it's been a long day for me. I'm tired, and have a good one. Peace.